So thank you everyone for joining our final office hours for the Adult Day Centers. My name is Emily Varville. I'm the project manager at Leading Age Virginia. And as many of you know, Leading Age Virginia is an association of not-for-profit aging services organizations serving the adult day centers, senior housing, assisted living, nursing homes, and home and community-based services. So we're gonna get started with just our Zoom logistics. If you would like to ask a question, please use the chat option at the bottom of your screen. And you may raise your hand if you have a question to ask. All links will be placed in the chat as needed and all office hour sessions have been recorded and you will have access to those recordings and the slides after each session. So I wanted to just take a quick minute to introduce our grants team that has been behind the scenes of all of the work that's been done for the adult days with this grant. So we have Tracy Lewis, who is our policy and advocacy coordinator, Betsy Archer, who's our grant administrator, Dana Parsons, who's our VP and legislative counsel, and then there's me, the project manager. And on the next slide, we I wanted you guys to all have an idea of who was also behind the scenes, our project partners from HQI. So we have Allison and Felicity that have been on all of the office hours calls with us. All right, so going very back to the beginning, we have the project funding source. So Leading Age Virginia received this funding from CDC through Virginia Department of Health through the HAIAR program. And we partnered up with HQI on this grant. So the original goals of this grant were to develop the policies that reflect the best practices for infection prevention and control in the adult day centers and really make sure that they were in accordance with those state regulations. And then of course, provide those policies so that they could be customized and meet the unique needs of all of the licensed adult days. Year two of this grant has really been focused on taking those policies and working on implementation and providing any resources that we can to help you implement those policies. So here are some of the grant developed resources that we were able to create. So we have those IPC template policies that were really created year one. We have the monthly office hours sessions. We have the infection control policy notebooks that includes the policies. We have our web page and resource library, the at-home resources for the adult day participants, caregivers, and their families. And then of course we have those infection control stipends. So going back to those infection control policies, the policy templates provided are consistent with the IPC guidance from the CDC, and they address the VDSS regulatory standards, and they have all been reviewed by DSS to make sure that they're within compliance. Some other things about these policies is that they were created with a team of Leading Age Virginia, HQI, also with adult day representatives and VDSS, like I said, looking over them, making sure that you're always gonna be in compliance with them. The templates contain yellow highlighted areas that should be customized with center specific details. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you an example of that in a couple of seconds. So really with these templates, we went through so many different topics. So I listed them all out here. As you can see, there is a wide variety and we do have that brand new COVID-19 one that came out in June. And we also have additional tip sheets to make sure that we have some supporting documents to go along with your template policies. So here is a good example of one. So this is our new COVID-19 one. And like I said before, it has those yellow highlighted areas that you can update with your center's information. They are in user-friendly Word documents, so it's easy to update them and get your information in there. And we also provide a notes and recommendations section at the end of each policy that you don't have to include in your policy, but it's some things that you can consider while you're drafting your policies. Moving on to our webpage and our resource library. So on our webpage and resource library, you can find all of the template policies. You can find all of the office hours recordings and slides. You can find any grant information. If you were curious about where the funding was coming from, we have all of that laid out. We also have links in these slides to all of these different ones, but Betsy's also going to be placing links in the chat that will take you to the webpage if you wanna take a look at it. So like I said, all of the policies are found on there. Once this grant ends, it's really important to know that this information is not going anywhere. It's gonna stay up on our site. You can continue to use it. And that brings us to your notebook. So we did send out the model infection prevention and control policies notebooks that has all of the template policies in them. And then we recently mailed out the COVID-19 template policies that you can add into your notebook. 
So then we do have those at-home resources for participants, caregivers, and family members. These resources were mailed out in resource packets a few weeks ago, so you should be getting them soon if you have not gotten them already. They have the three at-home resources and the new COVID-19 resource in them. We went based on capacity at your center, so that's based on how many copies you were given. We always recognize that centers may not be able to print in color or print them so that they look this way, so we wanted to make sure that we gave everybody kind of a starting pack of um, the resources, and we also have them included on our webpage, so if you want to download them and print them out that way too, you have them. And then, oh, some of the packets were given out at the IPC workshops. So if you attended the workshop or if you had a staff member attend that workshop, they should have gone home with that staff member. But if you do not have them, please just reach out to me and let me know. So that brings me to our IPC stipends. So 43 stipends were distributed to adult days across Virginia, which is over $29,000 that directly went back into the adult day centers. We really felt like with the stipends that we wanted to be able to support you the best way possible. And for some centers that meant helping with supplies. So we wanted to make sure that you were able to have proper PPE and cleaning products and those testing kits to really set your centers up for success. So we were so excited to be able to put some of that grant funding right back into the centers. And I do have a quick reminder on here just to make sure that you submit your receipts before July 31st, because that is when the grant ends. So the regional infection control workshops for the adult days, there were three workshops. They were in Williamsburg, Arlington, and Roanoke. And these four-hour in-person events really provided some hands-on infection control training, also offered attendees the opportunity to network with other centers and learn from other centers about best practices and what works well for some centers. We understand that centers are so unique, but sometimes it's nice to know that you have other people that are in your same boat. So we thought that these workshops were really successful and it was fun to kind of get off the screen for a little bit. And um, we had a few different types of presentations and um, some discussions. So I think overall they were really successful and there was food, so that makes it better too. So the number of adult days that have received support through this project. There were 74 centers that have been contacted through phone or email and invited to participate in the grant activities. So this includes the office hours, the resources, notebooks, workshops, the stipends. We also had 23 unique centers join the office hours since 2023. We have had 22 adult day staff members attend the infection control workshops. And the website template policy downloads have doubled since April. So I just want to remind everybody that the grant developed resources will continue to be located on our webpage. Just because the grant is ending does not mean that anything is going anywhere. So you'll have access to all of it still. And if you do have trouble accessing something, you can always reach out to me and we will get it for you. So some other infection control resources. So we do have the VIPTC courses that I did talk about in the workshops. But these courses give you different levels of education. So you can do foundational, intermediate, advanced. They walk you through different modules that are infection control. So I would say if you have a new hire at your center, you can always have them sit down and take some of these courses that you think might be applicable to your adult day. They are also available for CE credits, which is really nice for some of the nursing staff that I know need to get those credits in. Um, and this is kind of what that page looks like. It will have you go to the post test and they will take that test in order to get those CE credits. So with these videos, they were very thought out. Um, they have a bunch of really great infection control information and you can pick module by module. So somebody doesn't have to sit down and watch all 12 of them. They could pick, you know, vaccines and hand hygiene or PPE and viruses. Um, so it gives a nice variety. And like I said, they're all different levels. So um, for somebody that might be just coming onto your staff, you can always have them go and do that foundational knowledge. 
and we will include all of the links in here. So another thing that you do have access to is VDH provides cup of tea with an IP every Wednesday at 2 p.m. So if some of you have met Ginger from our IPC workshops, she hosts this every week to make sure that IPs can get together and talk about infection control. She also includes a weekly education nugget, which is usually just a small tidbit of education that you can share, whether it's an infographic or maybe a video. It's also a great way to ask questions to IPC, IPs that are on there. And she also goes through like a quick roundup of the infection control updates for that week. So if there's something that's a hot topic in infection control, she'll bring that into it too. But it's a quick meeting. It's usually only, I would say, about 15 minutes a week, but it gives you all of that good information. We will drop that link in the chat as well. So then we also have the Virginia Infection Prevention and Control Training Alliance, which is amazing because it has a resource library, upcoming events, a featured training resource once a month. So maybe it's a new resource, maybe it's an old resource, but it does give some more information about how to use that resource. There's also some regulatory guidance and cheers for peers. So if you think somebody is going above and beyond in infection control, they might be in that cheers for peers section. Okay, so then there is also CDC Project First Line, and this is something that we haven't talked about on here yet. So CDC Project First Line has infographics, micro learning activities, interactive scenarios, training toolkits um, that kind of walk through all different types of infection control. I would say some of these do fall more clinical, but I do think some of them would be great for adult days. You can print them out, you can give them to your staff, um, but they do have some really great resources on there as well. So then we have our project partners, HQI. So to my knowledge, the infection preventionist still will be available for infection control questions and that site visit support may be on a case-to-case -case basis depending on the location of the adult day and the availability. So we do have HQI on here for them to maybe say a little bit more about this and you guys can take over whenever. Hi, Emily, thank you. So yes, we do have, um, and I'm sure um, you guys have probably met most of our infection preventionists through site visits that they've been doing through a parallel project. Um, so we do have infection preventionist availability to answer any and all of your infection prevention questions. And um, all you, thank you, Betsy. Yep, she shared the webpage. And then, um, and then also feel free to send, send any of your questions Emily's way and she will make sure we get them and we will get your questions answered. And then again, as far as on-site visit support, that is, um, that, that is dependent on location and our IP's availability, but we will make every effort to provide any type of infection prevention assistance support that we can. Thanks, Allison. Um, yeah, with, them being our project partners, it's one of those things that we wanted to make sure with the grant ending, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that there is going to be some support out there in infection control and you're not completely left hanging on July 31st. So we are so thankful for HQI and all of the contributions that they've made on this project because they played a huge part in the policy development and our resource development processes. So thank you guys so much for being on here. So that brings us to, if anybody has any questions, I do have the contact us leading age Virginia email on here. Anybody on this call usually has my email, so I didn't feel like we needed to throw that in there today. But then I also linked the web page on here as well so that you can find those policies, find the office hours recordings or slides, um, find any other kind of updates that we have on that site. And then that brings me to the end. So today we just had a quick session, but Thank you. Thank you to the Adult Day Center staff for being on the calls, going to the workshops, answering any questions that we have so that we can make the resources the best that we could make them. Um, thank you, of course, to HQI for being our project partners and Virginia Department of Health for making this grant possible. And of course, the CDC goes along with that. But also thank you to our office hours 
and our workshop guest speakers. We've had them from all different um, organizations and associations and um, the state agencies. So we've been so thankful for that. Um, also our infection control workshop hosts, Williamsburg Landing, Arlington Adult Day, and Brandon Oaks. And then of course, a special thank you for me to our Leading Age Virginia staff um, for, you know, going above and beyond for this whole grant and making sure that the adult days are all getting what they need. So that brings us to the end of the office hours for today.